and welcome to Accent on Education. I'm Michelle Metzger, the Executive Director of Human Resources for Culpeper County Public Schools. It has been a while since we've been here, pre-pandemic era, I believe it was, um, but today I'm excited to introduce Mrs. Laura Hoover to everyone. Laura is now the Director of Communications for Culpeper County Public Schools. So I think one of the last times that I was here, I introduced you to Barbara Hunter. Barbara was a consultant who owned um, the company Hunter Communications, who did a communications audit for us. And that was back in 2020, in January, that um, she gave the results of that survey to our school board. One of the reasons we wanted to do the um, audit was because the strategic planning from the school board placed one of their goals as communication is a priority. So after the audit was completed, we presented to the board and then I had Barbara on the show before the, before the um, board meeting that night. So during that January of 2020, the things that she did was she surveyed our employees parents, she had interviews with different folks, she had um, some panels, and she reviewed all of our internal documentations. And the main thing that she said that Culpeper County Schools needed was a director of communications. So as of July 1st, Laura has been with us, so I'm going to let you uh, let her talk a little bit about her background, her experience. She is a Culpeper native and talk about herself a little bit. Fuck your native. <laughs> That's Fuck okay. your native, I'm but you live here. Pepper resident. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, thanks, Michelle. It's really exciting to be here and to be the director of communication for Culpeper County Public Schools. Um, I came here. I've worked for Fauquier County Public Schools for the last 18 years, starting as an ESL teacher, and I worked in the special education department as a dual language assessment specialist. And then I went to the central office as the ESL and world language supervisor, and then was the assistant principal and principal of Pierce Elementary in Remington. Um, prior to that, I got into the field of education through Teach for America, and I was a second grade bilingual education teacher in Phoenix, Arizona. That was a little ways back. <laughs> <laughs> so all of those things um, have really helped you in your job now. Yes. Current school administrator, worked with a population, uh, a diverse population, speaking Spanish, who helped us yes. with that mm -hmm. on a lot of occasions. So she's been a, a great asset to us in Culpeper. Um, moving forward to a couple other of the recommendations, the most important thing we wanted to focus on after hiring you was developing a communications plan. We wanted to improve communications with our internal um, employees as well as our families, our parents, our students. So that was one of the things that we wanted to do. So how is that coming right now? It's going really well. Um, a strategic communication plan has four components, which are research, analysis, communicate, and evaluate. Um, lucky for me, the research component was done through the <laughs> audit. Um, so that was very helpful to get started. So I had the communication audit with 12 recommendations of what we needed to look at as far as communications for Culpeper County Public Schools. The second component um, is the analysis component. And we started that this summer um, right away, meeting with schools, um, talking to the school administrators about communications within the school and outside um, internal as far as their communications with their staff and then external as far as administrator communication with the community and then down to the teacher level communication um, with the parents of the school. Um, so we identified challenges and we also identified strengths and we've been working to build on those, um, on those things. One other thing I think that came up in the audit that we all um, look to every day, and as a parent and a community member, the, the website. Yes. So I know you've been working closely to improve the website design. Yes, <laughs> yes. The website um, is a huge project, but it is something that we are working on um, actively to improve the website by design make it more user friendly mm -hmm. so that people can find things, um, that our families can find things, and also um, our staff can find important resources. So we are working on that and hope to begin a process of looking into a bigger design project with regards to the website um, 
maybe over the summer. It's not mm -hmm. a project that we can tackle during the school mm -hmm. year because it will require the support of our um, technology staff. And during the school year, they're busy with instruction in their schools. Um, so we will be tackling that project very soon. Another part of the audit, and these kind of all come together, um, branding, marketing, get our getting our name out there. But one thing that I like the most um, that you've done is the Friday Good News. Tell us about the Friday Good News. Yes, um, one of the um, audit recommendations was to design and implement a Culpeper County Public Schools newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, a big task, and so as a step to work towards the newsletter, um, I've started with what we're calling the CCPS News. So every Friday at noon, we have what I call good news at noon, <laughs> and um, it's an opportunity to report on things that are happening in our schools, things that are going, things that have happened, events, um, things that are going to happen, um, and they typically are a um, news release. Um, some of the schools are sending me information. And one thing, looking to the future when we um, move into moving forward next year, is that we want to create a school news network. Identify mm -hmm. school news liaisons at each school that I can work directly with to um, get the news out. Because there's so many amazing things happening in our schools every day. And so, such great work by the teachers, by the students, and we want to make sure we get those things out um, so people know the great things that are happening. <laughs> and there are a lot. Yes, there are. Things that I don't even know about that, that you mm -hmm. point out every week. Uh, along with the good news, a couple of the other things that the audit brought about to our attention was um, we needed to work a little bit more about our crisis communication. I know you've been working on that. And then also with our growing ESL population, we have the Family Resource Center. Yes. So we, tell us about how we've been, you know, improved our procedures for communicating with those families. Yes, well, prior to the audit, um, it's my understanding, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't have the same structure that we have now for translators correct. and interpreters at our Family Resource Center. But now we have a system in place at the Family Resource Center, so if anyone needs assistance with translation or interpretation in any language, they contact the resource Family Resource Center and they have a team that works with them. They all they work with parents, they work with schools, they translate and interpret for meetings, for events, they do the weekly calls, they translate all of our division level communication, and they are amazing. So <laughs> they have been so helpful to me and it's been really exciting to, to work with them. So that is one piece that I think that some people probably don't realize mm -hmm. that we do. Um, we have recently expanded the Family Resource Center to not only include that component, but it also um, has expanded to what we're calling Family Resource Center Connections that has a large meeting space for community mm -hmm. um, entities to work with us to do workshops and meet needs of the community. There is a collaborative workspace that includes our English as a Second Language staff and special education parent resource um, person and also they have a section called latitudes that's a food and clothing closet um, that families can um, call them if there's or call the school and work with the school counselors to access those things if they need them it's a beautiful space it is it's amazing and we've um, had i know they've had a lot of um, community meetings and outreach and things happening there already so it's been very it's a good location and yes. people have been able to come they've been doing workshops in english and in spanish as well mm -hmm. um, some of the things they've worked on um, helping parents understand internet safety for their kids mm -hmm. Um, so stay tuned for more information about workshops that are going on there. Excellent. So another part of your job, besides this huge undertaking <laughs> of communications, is grant management. So you are also managing some of this large 
pile of federal money that we are getting. So do you want to talk about that just a little bit so people know sure. what grants you know that we have going on and just some a few of the projects? Yes, um, part of um, my background when I was um, working with the um, ESL program um, before I came here, I also worked with the Title III federal grant and the other um, title grants. So that gave me that background in mm -hmm. grant management. Um, so when I came on here, I had that background that I could apply to the federal pandemic relief grants. Um, there have been many, um, mm -hmm. the CARES grant, um, ESSER II, ESSER III, there's an HVAC <laughs> grant, there's quite a long <laughs> list and um, it requires a lot of work and a lot of management. Um, and we are very thrilled to have the opportunity to um, access those funds for our students to help bring everybody back from, from the pandemic. But it is, um, it's definitely a big chunk of what I do. <laughs> and right it's not now. just that they're giving you free money. Right. People think you're, oh, here's a million dollars, but there are a lot of different ties to that money and procedures you have to follow and things are allocated to different specific areas. So Yes, um, each grant has its own rules, it has its own purpose, um, and we work through each one of those with each department. Um, but they're allowing us to do some pretty great things um, for our, our students and our school community. So looking ahead to the spring, what are some exciting things Culpeper schools are, are looking forward to? Oh, goodness. We're looking forward to a very busy spring of, <laughs> of activities and exciting things um, on the communication front. Um, like I mentioned, we're looking forward to um, moving towards that newsletter mm -hmm. and working on our website and improving communications with families. Um, there's many activities going on in the schools. Um, we're trying to get ourselves back to some sort of pre-pandemic level mm -hmm. as far as being able to True. hold activities mm -hmm. in the schools, which we weren't able to do for so long. Um, so that's been um, that's been really exciting. And we've got some recognitions coming up. Um, the Teachers of the Year will be recognized yes. uh, at the April school, school Board meeting, and we have Years of Service recognitions coming up. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening in Culpeper right now. Yes, mm -hmm. we're excited. So. As of today, since Laura is our new communications mm -hmm. I'm director, I am passing the baton to you. You're going to be our new host of Accent on Education. <laughs> so we're excited to have you. We're lucky to get you in Culpeper and we look forward to all the things you have to share with us. Well, thank you. I am looking forward to it as well. Right. We'll be back shortly with more Accent on Education. <music> Welcome back to Accent on Education. I'm Laura Hoover, Culpeper County Public Schools Director of Communication, taking um, this spot um, from Mrs. Metzger, who just um, handed off the baton to me. And I'm excited to have Adam Kawansi, the new Executive Director of Special Education with us today. Adam started his role with Culpeper County Public Schools on August 2nd of 2021 and I'm excited um, to introduce him to the community. Um, so Adam, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, glad to be here. So tell me about your background experience that has led you to this position in Culpeper. It's a rather long story, but I'll keep it brief. My mother was a educator for 30 years in special education, and so as a child, I watched her educate students with disabilities. And as I developed and grew, I started participating in various programs that involve students with disabilities as a mentor and then as a college student I supported extended school year programs in my local uh, school division uh, when I would come back from the summer and then I went to college I studied English and when I came back um, or finished college I should say uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do so I took a year teaching English in France 
And I spent a year teaching English in France, and that was a wonderful experience. I loved it. So when I came home from France, I told my mother that I wanted to be a teacher, and not only that, I wanted to be a special education teacher. So immediately following my return from France, this is about 2006, I uh, applied for graduate school to become a special education teacher, and that started my path. And then I worked in Fairfax County Public Schools, first as an intern in that graduate program that I got involved in, uh, into multiple roles. I was a special education high school teacher for 9th and 11th grade students. And then I became a special education department chair supervising a high school program for students with emotional disabilities. Followed that with central office roles in procedural support uh, and then supervision of students with more intensive needs in Fairfax County. And then lastly concluded with a short brief stint in due process for Fairfax County Public Schools before entering Culpeper. And I came here in August, I think a month after you. Okay, well that's awesome. Um, so what types of things do you do as the ed Executive Director of Special Education? I do so many things, mm -hmm. uh, but with such a great team of people and I really enjoy it. And the transition has been wonderful, by the way. Um, obviously, I have to look at the big picture uh, for special education for Culpeper County Public Schools, making sure that we're supporting the needs of all students with, need, with special needs in Culpeper. So that involves um, planning, budgeting, orchestrating, uh, professional development for teachers, one of my favorite tasks. Mm -hmm. So as the director, I get to lead the professional development planning for new teachers, current teachers, and all the specialists that we have involved. I have a small team of people within central office that I uh, support, and then we facilitate the support of special education in, in all of the schools in Culpeper uh, as best we can, uh, and focusing on delivering exceptional educational opportunities for students with disabilities. Awesome, sounds like you're pretty busy. Very busy every day. So if there's somebody who doesn't know much about special education, what would you want them to know about special education? Uh, I would say that the first thing to know about special education is to know that the goal is to provide uh, individualized supports and instruction to students with disabilities so that they can make academic prog progress commensurate with their abilities. And there are a variety of ways that students are supported in public education uh, that involves primarily the delivery of specially designed instruction. And that has been a personal charge of mine recently is to make sure that we are consistent in our understanding and delivery of specially designed instruction. And I've come up with a very succinct way of describing it. And so what I tell our new teachers is that what we want to do is do something specific, supportive, and intensive for every student in Culpeper County. So we specifically identify their needs and their challenges. We find and identify the supports they require, and then we deliver it at the intensity they individually require to make their progress. All right, that sounds great. Now you mentioned new teachers. What would you say is something that is attractive about Culpeper County Public Schools um, for a new teacher who's looking for a school division? So I have had the opportunity to work in the largest school division in the Commonwealth and now I'm working in I think what we would consider a moderately sized school division and the primary difference uh, that I have from experience is that new teachers in Culpeper County Public Schools can get direct support from central office as we described the professional development that we focus on, making sure that they're supported, they're mentored, making sure that all of their uh, questions can get answered in a very fast uh, and competent way. And I think that it's a great environment to learn and to be supported by your colleagues. Uh, it's such a community feeling in a, in a division this size, specifically Culpeper. I've observed just how tight-knit our communities are within each school. The cultures and the climates of the schools are great. I think all the teachers feel supported. At least that's the feedback that we're getting. And so it's been really great to see how much that can happen. In a larger division, you're one of thousands, right? So you don't necessarily get the frequency of contact with those that are intending to support you as much as you can in Culpeper. I'm an easy person to get a hold of. So if somebody has a question and they can't get a hold of a person they would typically call, I'm a phone call away as well. And my favorite activity right now in Culpeper is the opportunity to deliver that new teacher professional development. And we meet with them on a regular frequency to support them. All right, that sounds great. So we've been talking a lot about um, coming back from 
our unfinished learning and learning loss from the pandemic, and it's had a great impact on student learning. What do you see as the biggest post-pandemic challenge for our students and our schools right now? Well, and this goes for all students, not just students with disabilities, but we are returning to, uh, I don't want to call it a, a normal experience, mm -hmm. right? It's our new normal, more typical perhaps. And what we're trying to do is make sure that the learning to learn behaviors that were existent before the pandemic show up every day with the students that we are now supporting in person. So as much as the teachers have separated from the educational environment, so have the students, we're all coming back together and we're now navigating the challenges of being in that very stimulating social environment. And so making sure that we are accepting where everybody is as we return, acknowledging the, the degree of individual functioning and making sure that we are appropriately addressing where every student is at this time. So every student had an impact by the pandemic, and I'll speak a little bit more about students with disabilities. The pandemic impacted each individual student in a different way. Mm -hmm. So some students were able to flourish in a virtual environment, others maybe had some more challenges. And so we have to take individual steps to address the individual learning loss for each student. I think we've done that. And now it's just carrying forward and making sure that we continue to identify where the baseline of functioning is so that we chart the plan for how to make them move forward to continue to make progress. All right, and I think you're right, that goes for, for all of us, yes. not, not just students or students with disabilities. All right, well, you recently moved to Culpeper, and um, you have, are here with your family, so what are some of the things that you like about living in Culpeper now? Well, I'll highlight, so we did recently move. We moved shortly after I took the position in August, and this goes back to that question about new teachers, and I can tell you what I like about Culpeper, and perhaps it suits my personality and the personality of my family, um, but I love our geographic location. Mm -hmm. We are not so far a distance from Washington, D.C. We are not so far a distance from Charlottesville. We are close to the mountains, so if you're an outdoors person, my family, we like to get out into the environment, we like to go hiking, we like to be out in parks, we like to be active. Mm -hmm. And so Culpeper affords that and you can access so many different environments very easily, so I like that. Um, I certainly enjoy getting out to all of the food options that are available mm -hmm. in Culpeper. I'm pleasantly surprised with the high quality of restaurants uh, in Culpeper, especially downtown. So uh, many things to, to enjoy about Culpeper, uh, but even beyond that, I found the entire community, my neighborhood, and everybody in it very welcoming. And so uh, we just like being around uh, the community and socializing and interacting with everybody. It's been great. All right, well, that's great. Well, we are so glad that you are here in Culpeper. We'll be back with more Accent on Education. This year, Culpeper County Schools has opened not just a new school, but a world of new opportunity for our students and our community. The Culpeper Technical Education Center, CTEC. Hi, I'm Sean Summerscales, and I'm the proud principal of the Culpeper Technical Education Center. CTEC offers 13 different program areas focused on providing hands-on, authentic workplace experience in high-demand, high-wage industries. What I'm looking for into this like whole program, I'm hopefully to learn different kinds of things, like learn how to read a blueprint, learn different kinds of tools, and different kinds of new skills. Students can expect here to be the authentic self. You're able to come in here with a smile. You're able to be in the room with your peers and a teacher that truly cares and shows concern for you. Right now, we're starting to go into the kitchen to chicken fabrics from the class. I learn to speak yourself. CTEC is a great place. It's unique for the students because they're not just getting lectured to. They are definitely getting a good mix of hands-on experience um, with the didactic information that's being introduced to them. You're learning drafting and architectural design, but you're learning the aspects of it that you hope to participate in. 
Uh, through Electricity One, I have learned residential wiring of different kinds, stuff dealing with the home, such as lights, how to wire up different rooms, and outside things around the house as well. I came into the class barely knowing how to do CPR and just kind of knowing the basics first aid and as of now I know a lot. We were CPR certified in the second week we learned basically everything about the human body. So far in the class we have been learning how to layer hair, cut it, dot work, currently colored hair in the class. And so far the class has been really amazing. Ms. Felicia is a really good teacher. CTEC students work towards nationally and internationally recognized industry credentials. In addition to industry certifications, many CTEC classes are dual enrolled courses, allowing students to earn college credit through the Virginia Community College System. To learn more about the programs offered at CTEC, visit our website. Become a CTEC Trailblazer and go seize opportunity. Welcome back to Accent on Education. I have another guest here today, Jody Place, the administrator for Phoenix Alternative Education. And Jody started teaching in Culpeper in 2000 until she became a school administrator in 2008 and she was selected as the administrator of the CCPS Alternative Education Program in 2018. Welcome, Jody. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad you're here and you have an opportunity to tell us about Phoenix. So many people in our community do not know about Phoenix Alternative Education Program. Tell us a little bit about it and the programs that you offer. Sure, so Phoenix um, is a learning community. It's on the campus with Culpeper Middle School and Culpeper County High School um, in that building that sits right in the middle. And we are a smaller learning community that serves students in grades six through 12. And, and we serve students for a variety of reasons. And I think sometimes there is a myth about who the kids we serve are. We serve amazing, amazing students in our community. Um, so we sometimes have students that need to come to a smaller um, learning setting because of different things going on in their life. They need to recover credits um, that they've lost because of life circumstances. They need to earn credits at a quicker rate. Um, we do have students who need some space from the traditional um, educational setting for a little while so that they can thrive when they go back. So. Um, we have a blended learning model that we use, which means we are using online, but we're also using direct instruction, just like you see in a traditional setting. Lots of project-based learning going on um, in our building. And um, all of my staff, I'm very proud to say, are trauma-informed and trauma-responsive. So we're all about relationships at Phoenix. That's great. Yeah. Now, what grade levels are um, represented in the student population? We have at students Phoenix? from sixth grade through 12th grade. Okay. Um, so, and they are not in the same classes. Sometimes people wonder. Mm -hmm. um, our middle school students um, are separate from our high school students. So we are able to be very, um, you know, developmentally appropriate in the instruction that we're offering. Okay, well, yeah. sounds great. Yeah. So in your role at Phoenix, are you seeing an impact of the pandemic on our students' social, emotional well-being? There's no question. I'm not sure that any educator would say they're mm -hmm. not seeing an impact. Um, unfortunately, but um, so many students are in a place where they're having to heal from this period of having lots of chronic unpredictability, um, increased isolation from their school community or their community at large, um, and a lot of the anxiety and fear that came with, you know, the pandemic life. So. I think that what we're seeing is as students have come back into um, school, we're, we're seeing that. And what we know is that our brains operate best when we feel like we're in a place of safety and belonging. And so right now what we're trying to do, I think across our schools is make sure that our buildings are fostering, that students are reconnecting with their school communities um, and feeling like they are in a very safe and nurturing space so that they can get to a place where they're ready to learn um, again, just as we were before. Well, great. Well, one yeah. of the things that I have seen because I've had the opportunity to visit you at um, Phoenix is there's a lot of artwork um, that's on display yeah. in the hallways. How are you using art 
to address those student needs and as a part of your instructional program? So during my very first year as administrator at Phoenix, um, I just happened to witness something just as an educator that was just phenomenal. I, I can't think of another word that I would use where I would see when students started engaging in something very creative um, and you know artistic and hands-on, you would watch this calm come over them. And um, so even a student who at most other times was fidgeting or you know boisterous um, it would just you would see this calming come over them and with my background I knew what I was seeing was I guess mindfulness they were mm -hmm. very much in the present moment which is mm -hmm. is again it's very very healthy and healing when we can be in the present and we're not worrying about mm -hmm. what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future so um, we also started seeing the products that our students were creating and they were being able to demonstrate this amazing learning through these artistic um, methods. So um, I was very fortunate that at the end of that year, um, and one of my paraprofessionals, Mary Dawson, um, who is an amazing artist in our community and works with a lot of different individuals in our community in the arts, um, she wanted to have this event at the end of the year, which was an arts and accomplishments showcase. Mm -hmm. And so we transformed our entire building into this like walking gallery. You could walk through and you saw all of these amazing products. Um, and we invited our students and their families and it was absolutely wonderful. And um, I think that it was such a celebration. So I've been so fortunate that Dr. Brad's support and the school board support um, and Miss Dawson was able to become a certified teacher. Mm -hmm. So I now have a um, full-time um, art teacher at Phoenix. And um, because of the pandemic, we weren't able to continue having that event during, during those, the last two years. But we are so excited that we're gonna bring it back because I think what you'll see when you see all of the products that our students have created across curriculums, it's not just about an art class. We're um, incorporating it in, across all of our content areas because students can so creatively show what they're learning in the most beautiful ways of communication. Um, and so, and I think it also allows um, them to see themselves and others to see them in a different way. And so um, it's something that we definitely want to put out there for others to see. And so we're excited that we will be having that again That's this year. Great. Yes, it's <laughs> Miss Dawson is in full planning mode. Um, so we will make sure that um, you have that information so the community has that information um, because it was, it was a wonderful night to celebrate also our graduates um, that we share with Eastern View and CCHS and also our community partnership with Groundworks and Verdun. Mm -hmm. We highlighted them, we have students who work um, through an eight week program, a leadership program with them each semester. So. We have lots to celebrate, yes. and so we're excited to bring that back um, again this year. That's great. Yeah. I think I remember that you have, that Phoenix has some social media where some of the art is yes. also shared. Yes. How, would, how do I find that? That is on Twitter. Okay. Um, we, we do love to tweet. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, um, if you just go to, um, and I hope I get it right, CCPS Alt Ed okay. on Twitter, you can find us. Um, we also have a website that we um, post information as well. But yeah, um, if anybody ever visits our building, it's forever changing. And again, I think that it's all instructionally connected. And so it's just a great way to see how we can communicate our learning in all kinds of different ways. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, I hope that folks will um, yeah. look you up on well, Twitter. I hope so too. <laughs> and, and for sure, always, we love um, any kind of communication. We love interaction with our community. So. That's great. Yeah. Now, I also know that recently you've been leading some professional development <laughs> workshops. Bit, so tell me yeah. about the conferences that you've been to recently and what topics you're presenting. Yes, I was so um, fortunate to be asked to present uh, two conferences recently. The first one was uh, an educational neuroscience symposium. And then the second was um, creating trauma sensitive schools conference. And so I got to travel um, to present at both of those. And um, essentially, so my background and I guess my great interest and in what I bring to Phoenix is grounded in, four, there are four pillars of what's called an edu 
applied educational neuroscience framework. Mm -hmm. um, and that sounds, I'm not a neuroscientist even on TV. <laughs> um, but what that means, basically, there are four areas that we really can focus on to make sure that we're um, addressing all of a student and adult's needs in our building. And so that would be an educator's brain and body state. If we make sure our adults are doing well, that is gonna translate to them helping our students do well. Touch points are all about relationships and making sure that we are creating these spaces where students feel safe and like they belong and they're seen and heard. So it's all relational. Um, Co-regulation, so that's where you're seeing Sometimes when we are experiencing really big emotions or lots of stress or chronic adversity, we don't always make our best decisions or we sometimes, emotions get away from us. Um, and so co-regulations, the idea of that is that if we can share our calm with someone else, because emotions are very contagious. We know this as parents when our, our kids push our buttons or our mm -hmm. spouses. Um, so we use that contagion to bring calm to a situation. So um, we never lose that need, by the way. Mm -hmm. Even as adults, we need, we need co-regulation. And then the last one is teaching about neuroanatomy. So my staff and my students learn all about their brain and body states so that they're better equipped to handle stressors and adversity and even past traumas um, that they're experiencing. It, when you know more about yourself, you can handle things and you have the tools in your toolbox to handle things um, in such a better way. It's great. Yeah, it's it's honestly it's so exciting. I could mm -hmm. talk about it a, a lot, but um, the kids I think are really, you know, I think they are really excited about it when they learn things, and I think it normalizes some of the things that they're experiencing, um, which I think ultimately again helps them this this sense of belonging, like like okay, it's okay to be angry, but what do you do so right. that you can handle that appropriately? Yes, okay. well that's awesome. Yeah, it is. Now, one more thing. Yeah. I recently learned that you are a published <laughs> author. Uh, yeah, I did so, a thing. <laughs> what is this, and how did you get this opportunity? Yes, um, thank you for, for highlighting that. Mm -hmm. So um, I had presented a number of times for um, an educational organization called ASCD, and um, I was really lucky that at one of my presentations, a member of the publishing acquisition team happened to come to my presentation and um, they reached out to me and said, hey, we would like to work with you on some of the content that you're, you know, presenting on. So um, my first love is English. I was an English teacher for many, many years. So this is a dream come true um, for me to get to, to write and publish something. So um, for me, it just seemed like the topic that I am really um, focused on and that I'm spending so much time trying to talk to others about is emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of what we see right now in our society kind of stems back to emotional regulation or a lack thereof. And so um, that's what I focused on. And it's really supposed to start conversations and build curiosity um, for more learning because there's lots to learn. and. It's ever changing, but I'm hoping that this is a, a quick reference that someone could use to at least start their journey um, and again, start those conversations in their own buildings or their own classrooms. Awesome, so if I wanted to get a few extra copies of this to share with my friends, where would I find them? Well, you can you can get it through the ASCD site, but it's actually mm -hmm. on Amazon too, which wow, my mom and dad, awesome. are they <laughs> think that's really cool um, that I'm on Amazon, but um, yeah, it's, it's right there. And again, I think it's just something that I would love, if anybody gets a copy, not, no pressure there, but any of the content, I'm always open to have conversations. I'm always learning, so I love talking to other people so that I can learn and grow together with them. Well, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much, yes. and thanks for sharing all of the awesome things that yeah. are happening at Phoenix. Yeah. I appreciate this time so much. Well, we are grateful that we had this opportunity today, and that is all for Accent on Education. We'll see you next time.